I had another scary experience in the middle of Derbyshire. This is Britain's first Alpine-style cable car. Suspended above the heights of Abraham, passengers get a spectacular view of the countryside. I discovered how they'd cope in the unlikely event of an emergency. If there ever is a breakdown, this hair-raising ride is the only way to reach stranded passengers. With cable car manager Barry Thompson behind me, I was winched to the ground, with nothing between me, the river and the road, 170 metres below. Seen from this angle, it looks terrifying. It was. And once we reached the car, we still had the ordeal of getting on board. This drill has to be practised every week. Luckily, I only had to do it once. Right, I'm there. Are you on the seat? Yes. You are? OK. Yeah. Right, now I'm going to disengage this safety strap, so... OK. Now put that... Get down now. Oh. Put this round one of the columns in the seat. OK. We've arrived at last. There's your head, goes. Okay. Yes, so you just... I held tight again at the RNLI's base at Cowes where they show lifeboatmen how to activate the self-writing equipment on Atlantic 21s. But first, we had to turn the boat over. That's me on the right, nearest the camera. My knuckles were white as I gripped the handles with all my strength. It was a very frightening moment. Mike did his best to reassure me. All you do then is you go, right, put yourself down under and pull with the other hand, OK? How long does it take? No, a little bit. It's just seconds, honestly. Joe will be helping you from this side and I'll be helping you from the other. Right. So there's no problem. OK. OK, so I'll do the first one, ready? Right. In a real capsize, the waves would be enormous, and keeping a clear head is all important. Everybody checks everyone else, so no one's left behind when the moment comes to let go the craft and swim up to the surface. This was another dodgy situation, and a very slippery one. Driving a Rolls Royce round a skid pan covered in oil and water. I was trying to prevent a skid, but the car got the better of me. A little bit too slow, then. It's good fun. A Rolls is all very well, but for real style, you can't beat a vintage Daimler. Simon and I dressed the part and loved every minute of the seven hours it took us to drive this 1903 model from London to Brighton. Even Goldie had a front seat view as we bowled along the A23, cheered by the messages and waves from Blue Peter fans who came out to support us. It was a lot harder to drive than the Rolls. No power steering or automatic transmission in the old days. But what a way to travel. I wonder, though, if the drivers of the modern cars waiting to overtake enjoyed it as much as we did. You're always on the move on Blue Peter. And on Halloween, what better way to arrive at Television Centre than by broomstick? flying in a British Airways TriStar to Bangladesh. Once again, I was doing it the hard way, training to be a stewardess. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. How are you doing for a holiday? It's lovely. Landing here. No, no, Landing in a country you've never visited before is always a memorable experience. That was especially true of Bangladesh. And 1,500 miles south in Sri Lanka, I changed my uniform for a sari as I was dressed in thousands of pounds worth of precious local gemstones. Yes, these are all colors of sapphires. 
secret sapphires, moonstones, emeralds and rubies were draped all over me. Well, that's very pretty, this one. That's the green sapphire and the chrysoberyl cat side. Mm. It's a lovely milky stone, that, isn't it? We haven't finished, have we? Oh, good, there we are. feel them when they're there. They're very light, aren't they? But to prove all that glistens isn't always gold, I was lifted high over Regent Street in the heart of London to help put up the famous Christmas lights. How high up are we? Um, we're about uh, 50 feet when we're here. 45, 50 feet. A few more metres and we reached our objective, the hoist wire. Are we at altitude, then? <laughs> <laughs> when the lights were switched on, they made a magical display. A sure sign Christmas was on the way. The weeks before Christmas are a very special time for all of us on Blue Peter. It's when we launch our annual appeal. And whether it's for lifeboats or kidney machines at home or irrigation systems abroad, the response from viewers is always beyond our wildest dreams. And this year, I met Emmanuel in Malawi. Our sight saver appeal saved him from blindness. This was just a few weeks after his corneal graft operation. Before that, he couldn't see anything. He'd been blinded by measles when he was just one year old. Before the appeal, the pupils in both Emmanuel's eyes were clouded with white scar tissue. He was a confused little boy who would be reliant upon others for the rest of his life. You helped to give him back his sight. As you see today, six weeks after the operation, this child is completely healthy. His vision is completely normal. He can walk, he can play, he can smile again. It's like a miracle. The Sight Saver Appeal has provided mobile eye units and eye hospitals for Africa. The ophthalmic assistants are specially trained to visit villages and care for people with eye problems who've never had the chance of treatment before. I went to a clinic with Malawi's top eye doctor, Moses Chirambo, and saw how simple styes and infections can lead to blindness if they're not treated. And the latest news about Emmanuel is that he's just about to have another operation to improve the sight in his other eye. And the Sight Saver Appeal has raised two million pounds, which means that the sight of two million people will be saved. Now back to the BBC Symphony Chorus, and after that disastrous first audition, I decided I'd better have some singing lessons. And who better to train me than one of Britain's top teachers, Vera Roja. When I try to now move your head, yeah. it's very tight. Yes. Just no, we don't. Vera's training also helped when I sang a song for our Christmas entertainment. In my imagination, I search the starlit sky so bright. In my imagination, there I saw you in the night. And then one day I found you. How could I help but realize my lucky star was smiling? Right there before my very eyes You are my lucky star I saw you from afar Two lovely eyes at me, they were bees 